take one. <laughs> okay. Can I like make it more me? Hi, my name is Wynn. I was born and raised in Nebraska and my life changed forever when I put on a pair of high heel boots and backpacked for the first time as Patty Gonia. Patagonia is an environmental advocate drag queen. And if you're wondering what that is, I am too. This whole world is new to me, if you can't tell. This is a disaster. Thankfully though, I am not starting these trails alone. You're making such a huge difference. And I think that it's just so cool that you're an ally to kids in your school and that you guys are an ally every day of your life. This show is about how we can all learn to love ourselves more and love on Queen Mother Nature. I'm here to show you the whole entire process behind the scenes. About any single issue that I'm encountering, I wanna show you what I'm learning as a human in life outside of heels, and then to show you what my world can look like through the art form and through my superpower of drag, taking every piece of what we learn and forming it into one piece of art to hopefully make an impact. So here we go, queens. Scene 101, take six. Mother Nature's hella pissed. Hi! Hi! Hi, I love you. How are you? So good, how are you? One of the biggest things that I've learned this past year is how crappy we are as humans towards Mother Nature. I honestly just never thought about plastic. I would use it once, I'd throw it away, out of sight, out of mind. I didn't care where it ended up, where it went, who took care of it. I just thought that it was a way. It's still coming in. The shores continuously get slammed by microplastics and by ghost nets. Liz lives in Hawaii. She's been sharing with me what's really happening on the beaches. And she challenged me to come and see this problem firsthand. And so we packed our bags and flew to Hawaii. I'm on my way to Hawaii to make a film about the plastics crisis. And I had to get this. So now this is the fork I'm gonna use for like the next two weeks of my life in Hawaii. Isn't she cute? The way we as humans use plastic, there, there is no way of avoiding it. Like it is a problem. So that's why we're here in Hawaii. I think when most people think of Hawaii, they think of this tropical paradise. I think they think of it as pristine and clean and perfect and the epitome of beautiful. And it is. And it's also covered in plastic. I'm so excited. This whole entire journey started Yes, when I started caring more about single-use plastic in my life, but it also really started when I met my friend Liz. It's like my first date, but, you know, with a woman, my mother's dream. She is the doors that opened up this world to me. Hi! Hi, how are you? Are you real? Are you real? Welcome to Hawaii. Thanks, I um, feel so sweaty. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Tropical humidity, it's yeah. nuts. Yeah. Um, you're gonna see it, like I'm stoked on the ocean. It's also where I was devastated. Like marine debris is everywhere. Mm. So I know you just got off the plane, yeah. but if you still have it in you, let's go catch the sunset yeah. on my favorite yeah. beach. Let's go do it. Yes. Rainbow explosion. Woo! Look at the moon and the waves and the sand. This is beautiful! Yes! Wait, are Unreal. you freaking kidding? Yeah. So, beautiful what? paradise. Boom, it's boom, right boom. Here. You look down, literally, right at your toes, and what do you find, dude? Like, what is this? 
This is literally all plastic. I this know. This is crazy. It's nuts. Some of this stuff what even is, this? is so brittle too. Yeah. And it's just the sun, the wind, the water, all of the elements until it's just like. It's so tiny. Just degrades. Like, look at this. I know. This is unreal. Yeah. Unreal. It's millions of pieces. Completely. And it goes on for miles and miles. It's so important to see this. Mm. We have a problem with plastic. The whole entire beach for miles, as far as I could see, it is a line we are riding as humans, literally in the sand, that we don't care. It's so crazy to me. Like, I used to spend so much time outdoors. I, I spent my childhood outdoors. But yet, I don't think I thought about caring about the world or about Mother Nature at all. Patty is synonymous in my life with learning and unlearning. The experience of looking in the mirror and seeing the opposite gender was so powerful for me because it checked at the door every single thing I thought I knew about myself and every single thing I thought about the world around me. And realizing that I don't know crap about the world. Like, I have so much left to learn. When I was walking into this lab on the edge of the beach, I had no idea what I was walking into. This is crazy. Welcome to the 70s. Hello. Hello. How are you? Hi. Is this y'all? This is us. And then I met Jen. All about the eye contact, okay? Here, are you ready? One, two, three. Science, Science bitch. <laughs> no, that was good. You can't break though, you can't break. <laughs> You have to be more serious. Jen is an absolute science queen. So I get into this lab and she starts whipping out jar after jar of plastics. All of these polymers are floating polymers, toothbrush. No way. Yeah, that's toothbrush, toothbrush. handle. Okay. The reason you're seeing this on the windward side is because it's floating in from the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. And then the Hawaiian Islands are acting as a comb. And what piles up on our windward side is the fragmented old floating polymers. When we turn this corner, you will see the open mouth of a sea turtle GI tract. So just okay. prepare yourself for that. I was totally the kid growing up that almost passed out when we were dissecting frogs in middle school. What is that? And I'm surprised I didn't fall over or passed out. So this is the esophagus. Sorry, man. No, you're Sorry. good. You're good. We would dissect section after section of the GI tract, and then we cut open one new section of the tract. Oh, Lord. And hundreds of pieces of plastic started appearing. Are you kidding? Oh my gosh. That's literally so many pieces. Almost every single turtle we open has plastic in it. We actually find um, like actual plastic bags in them, just balled up inside of the GI tract. And people think that this isn't a problem and that this is not real. Marine debris is coming from all over the world, even landlocked states. You're from the Midwest, I go home and my family still doesn't want to believe that what they do has any effect on this. And I think that everyone everywhere needs to realize that what they're doing does matter. It really hit me that like, this is one turtle, and this is how much plastic it's eating. And they find this time and time again. This particular loggerhead sea turtle had a GI tract about as big as ours is. So imagine my body, and I have eaten all of these plastics. It's taking up space in the gut where prey and nutrition should be, mm. and it can't feel good. I wanted to have a heart to heart with Jen because I could tell the whole entire day just how much she cared about this. You wanna hold hands? <laughs> We're friends now. Her caring wasn't just in the lab. Like, this was her life. So what's it actually like, humanly like? I bring my daughter to the beach and I can't even focus on her building her sandcastle because I'm picking up the trash all around me, collecting it to do my part to try to take it off and be a good role model for her. He used to walk the beaches and look for seashells. Beachcombing was seashell collection. Now we beachcomb to pick up and clean up trash. 
We have three lines of evidence, three separate studies telling a really unfortunate truth that this beautiful place of the Hawaiian Islands is the Earth's most plastic polluted spot on the planet. It's not the people in that live here or travel here that's doing it. It's coming from far away. This is happening to us. Behind everything I do with Patty, there is a purpose of trying to make art informed by like what I'm learning, what's actually affecting my life is when. So let's talk about the dresses. Well, I know you wanted a little bit like larger pieces. Yeah. I guess talk to me about your thoughts. Angela is my friend. She is a member of the Patty community, but her superpower in this whole mix is fashion and fashion design and being a sustainable designer. So this is what we were originally thinking for the net dress, representing, you know, the problem, climate change, plastic crisis. Um, we have another look that's going to be a focus on plastic bag usage mm. um, and kind of like the more daily impact that your plastic consumption has. And then um, the last look I want to do is the letter dress. The community that supported Patty is on fire with love from Mother Nature. So I asked Patty's community to send in their letter, Dear Mother Nature, dot, dot, dot. And I told them that we would do a special little something with it. Okay, so we have our sketches. Now the reality is we need to do a lot to kind of like make this actually practically work. The biggest thing for me is just like, how can we use as many found materials and as many different materials as possible? When I was in the lab, Jen also showed me a video of her and her husband, Hank, on a boat, snorkeling out to see this massive, massive rope caught on a reef and how they were literally working on a project to remove that rope from the reef. And then she said, well, why don't you just come see it firsthand? Okay, I'm like really confused by this. So what is a ghost fishing net? Debris from offshore fishing efforts. So it's a conglomeration of floating plastic debris and it just all gets twisted together, all gets lumped up into a big mass. We jumped into the water and immediately my scuba mask filled with water, <laughs> but we made it work. We made it work and we dove down and saw this giant net caught on the coral reef. I didn't know up until yesterday that like most all, if not all of this rope is literally plastic. What's gonna happen if we don't stop this? It's one more problem, one more stressor that the reefs here in Hawaii have to face and, and eventually if, if nobody does anything, it's, it's, it's a pretty bleak future. I've seen, uh, yeah, large sections of reef that have just been sort of bulldozed by these things. And uh, 10 years later, there's, there's no regrowth. If you see a problem and you have the ability to do something about it, I think if you can, you should. I think it's important that we keep that spark and drive to like do something because it will it will make a difference. Yeah, there is hope. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I think that I have to be optimistic. It keeps me caring. That's yeah. the only thing that keeps me caring. Thank you, seriously. It's, Thank you. it's invaluable to see this firsthand. Yeah. Thanks for helping us do our homework. For real. Yes. Thank you. Thanks for spreading the word. We're really trying. We're gonna like attach this to my body and help people notice. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What this is making me think about is like how much else in my life I turn a blind eye to. Cause it's so easy as a human to turn a blind eye and not to care. Cause it's easier not to care. It's easier to have convenience in your life. Right. Every day we're faced with choices from the second you wake up to what kind of toothbrush you're going to use. Have you started to look critically at your choices every day? We're done with just business as usual. Because we can't do that. Look how far it's gotten us. We like talk all this talk and we've like seen this. Mm -hmm. But then it's time to like actually take action. I don't always think of advocacy as action. I used to look at rallies and I always used to wonder, are all these marches actually doing anything? Kavika! Great to meet you, are you a hugger? Uh, sure. No, How I are you? How are you doing? Kavika is literally magic. The plastic water bottle is not mine, it's my mom's. <laughs> he is a local activist, born and raised on the island, who is the leader of the climate strike here in Hawaii. My friends are telling me that they cringe when they watch it because of the, yeah! I 
need to reenact that right now. What do we want? Climate action. When do we want it? Now, bitch. Yeah! Our goal is to open people's minds to see the plastic pollution, to see the effects of climate change, um, of, of act, individual actions and corporate actions and governmental actions. At least for my organization, USU Climate Strike, we have to put the onus, the, the, not the blame, but the pressure to make change, we have to do that on those that can. And ensuring that everybody is included in the conversation. Ensuring that privileged communities are doing their part, where native communities and poor communities don't have to worry about making these changes that will affect the, literally the way they survive. This isn't a hobby, this is our life. And so we have been taking action on this. Um, knock on wood, our state will be the first state to declare a climate emergency. You know, people are starting to, to really, you know, take us for what we're saying. Okay, so I was your 7.30 a.m. meeting. Yes. Um, where are you going today and where are you going tomorrow? Oh, I have a strategy meeting today, actually, to get plastic banned on Oahu. When do I not have a meeting with the center? <laughs> Bitch, the tea is served. Yeah. What Kavika showed me the most is that advocacy is action and that our voice has power. When you make your voice heard, when you go to a rally, when you make yourself visible, like your people see that, that you have something to say. So one of my absolute favorite things to do in Patty World is to do group hikes. And I thought it would be the coolest thing ever to merge together a group hike with a trash pickup. Morning. Good, how are you? Yeah, great to meet you too. Since moving to Hawaii, Liz has been a part of an amazing organization called Sustainable Coastlines Hawaii. What's up? How are y'all? Keep stuff in the middle of the... Okay, everyone pile in super, super close. I just want to say a quick thank you so much to Sustainable Coastlines Hawaii. They're a nonprofit here on the ground that's doing incredible work to actually take action, which I think is really important. So find a new friend um, and let's let's clean a beach. Uh... We want our business to go out of business. Like we do not want to be cleaning beaches for the rest of our lives, and nobody should want to be cleaning beaches. It really is a gateway for people to do lifestyle change. And then it just is the super simple things, whether it's your water bottle, your bags, uh, your takeout containers, starting to bring your own and not using anything that's single use anymore. Those steps start to snowball into a whole lifestyle change. As deep as I'm digging, I'm using plastic. Yeah, like, like how? Like literally, literally. Wow. Like a foot deep. Yep. They were telling me they clean up beach after beach and week after week they come back, it's more and more plastic up on the beach every single day. So what was really important for me to learn is that this isn't something that we just get to like clean up our mess. We have to stop making a mess in the first place. One, two, three, the trashy queens! <laughs> and now I can die happy. <laughs> Amazing. After all of this on the drive home, I think I really realized how powerful it is to have a friend like Liz. When I decided to post photos of me online in drag, I received the most hate I've ever gotten in my life from people that I thought were in my corner. I decided to put my boots away and literally put them in my closet because it was too hard, it was too rough. I didn't want to encounter the pain anymore of showing the world who I really was. Part of your biggest impact can just be like your friendship and like in you opening up your world. It's like no bullshit. It's like this is what it's going to take because like I care about this more because you care about this. And it's like if we want to talk about allyship, like this is allyship for mother nature. Yeah. Yes, this is allyship as like two queer people, but like we can all be an ally to mother nature. Absolutely. I'm going to be hugged. <laughs> what I love most about Liz and about everyone that we met is that no matter their title or who they were, they were just a person that was down to care and was down to try. People weren't where they wanted to be, but they were further than they ever thought they would be. I have to believe that we can care. And I think the biggest thing I've taken away from this whole entire week is that, yeah, I'm outraged about this now, but I also see a lot of optimism One, two, about three. it. Yeah! 
Yes, we got the letters. We got the freaking letters, babe. Mm, I'm so excited. I'm Let's sorry. open them up. <clears throat> oh, oh, hell yeah. My gosh. Holy crap, did we get a lot of letters. Oh my gosh, all the rainbows. This is so surreal to me. I can't believe this many people wrote letters. Thank you, Mother Nature, for your beauty. I love climb, climbing your trees, Nash. <laughs> Dear Mother Nature, you are home and I love you. I sense your timeless presence and feel your strength and wisdom as you watch over me. Dear Mother Nature, you've raised me and helped me find the person I am within. Dear Mother Nature, thank you for the big blue sea always reminding me that I am so small, but able to stay afloat. I am so grateful to call you home. You are my daily teacher. I recycle and I walk to school every day. Sincerely, Angie. Angie walks to school. We all need to walk to school. I love you, oh loving mother. Bless you, oh divine beauty queen. With abiding love, Anders, your sassy gay pastor child. Yay! Oh my Whoa! God! These are like beautiful letters. I, I think I underestimated how gorgeously written these letters would be. To think that there's no hope there or that there's like no one or very few people that care. But like but so this is hundreds of letters. I know. Like I was so not prepared for how emotional I was gonna be reading these letters. I knew that people cared about mother nature. I thought that people would write in, but I had no idea just how much mother nature mattered to Patty's community and to each and every one of these people. Mother Nature, I'm sorry I didn't try harder earlier to save you. Please forgive me, I'm doing my best now. Stay whole and healthy so my daughter and her kids can enjoy you too. I'm the only gay man in my town, so I can't be publicly out yet. But I wanted my letter to reflect my pride to you, this community, and to Mother Nature that helps me live every day. Dear Mother Nature, I love the world you've given me. I'm a trans female to male, and going outside is the biggest relief to my dysphoria. I want to save and protect your beautiful skies. I want to share the wonderful wild with my future boyfriend. I've grown up climbing trees, having campfires, and rolling down hills. I can't imagine not having these memories. Dear Patagonia, these letters were made by a special needs science class at a high school in Georgia. Most of these students can't write, so these letters are their artistic representations of what nature means to them. Thank you for being a constant source of inspiration. Stay strong, stay awesome. Hearing their stories and reading their words, I knew that we could make such a special piece of art. My like my biggest hope was that like we could just like do right by all that we learned. These are absolutely gorgeous. Oh my god. So then it was time to make some art. And it all started with a poem that included everyone's words, everyone's outrage, everyone's optimism, taking every piece of what we learned, all of the action, and forming it into one piece of art that we could build everything off of. At the end of the day, it's up to people to decide what they're gonna do, but I hope that this art and everything we're making here this week can open people's mind. So there were three looks. The first look was a dress made of 100% found plastic bags. Are you like, I'm afraid of you moving before this is even ran yep. We wanted to make this look because single use plastic items are such a big part of this problem. We use it once, we throw it out. So we use these found plastic bags to make a whole entire look out of it. The second dress was a dress to personify the problem and the crisis here, and really the outrage of the whole entire issue. What if I just wore this as like a necklace around here? Like, I love that. Like, I don't think we need to like deconstruct it more than that. I think we need to kind of use it how we find it too. So we made this look out of nets. Not only the nets that we found in the ocean with Hank that he cut off of the huge ball of nets, but also all the nets that we found from our cleanups as well. And the third look was a love letter dress to Mother Nature. a dress of optimism, a dress made of every single person's letters that they mailed in, of their love for Mother Nature and how much they care, that also showed that hope is on the horizon if we all can care. The experience of doing drag reminded me of how harsh this world can be, but I just have to believe hope is out there 
and that all I needed to do was to be linked arm stronger with the people that are truly in my corner. You have to put on your boots in your life, whatever those boots are for you. Loving yourself for all of you and wearing every single bit of who you are is so important. We are all queens. It's not just Patty, it's not just Queen Mother Nature, it is in all of us. And my biggest hope is that this video, the art I get to make is Patty, that you watch this and you realize that your voice, your actions, they have power. And that really, it's gonna take all of us. It's gonna take all of us to care. It's gonna take all of us to realize that we have the ability to make an impact and that we all need to show Mother Nature some more love. Welcome to the planet, my dears. Wipe your feet. Come on in. No more need for coats in your mother's den. Take a look around. Take a taste of the waste we found. This is plastic. And this is tragic. And it's not going away. So let us sit at the dinner table in the house we call nature. Come, let's chat. I have an icebreaker. Are we still lighting candles while the house is burning? While we throw flame and fight over who is right, our mother does not bite her tongue or sit in silence. Oh no, Mother Nature's hella pissed. You see, a woman knows when she's been told. When the men in the boardroom think she's being too bold, too proud, too outspoken, too much to handle. When she's been made the doormat instead of the mantle. Is this our message in a plastic bottle? XO hugs kisses, I'll try harder tomorrow. Day after day we send our regards, millions and millions of plastic discards. P.S. We don't give a damn. But we should really give a damn. Now I know what you're saying. It's just a drop in the bucket. It's just one plastic bag, one straw, so suck it. Well, suck on this. Right now, there are more plastic pieces in the ocean than stars in the Milky Way. A billion plastic bags being used every single day. We dress this mess in political gains, in power change and profits made. Our mother says to go upstairs and put on something new. So come out of the closet and put on your boots. We've got a sh ton of work to do. Dear Mother Nature. Dear Mother Nature. Dear Mother Nature. I love you so much. I love you. I love you. I love you. May we do better. To step up and take care of you. To save and protect your beautiful sky. You've been there to listen when I've struggled through my darkest days. Loving you has taught me how to love myself. Give us a chance to show our gratitude. You are beautiful. You are loved. We will protect you. So queens, let me be straight. Father time is ticking on. And what will be left is what we have done. And what will be left is what we have done. Our mother is dying while we are out living. We must turn the tide from taking to giving. We will make a difference if we dare choose. It's time that we act. We've got everything to lose.